Hey YouTube, what's going on? I'm Ellie. Welcome back to Greg's Machine Shop. Today marks a milestone for us. We're going to fabricate the last component in the camshaft assembly, the rear camshaft bearing holder. We've already finished the front bearing holder, so I'm looking forward to seeing the camshaft rotate smoothly in the crankcase. Remember, the plans for the Wallaby 30cc engine are free to download from gregsmachineshop.com or visit Greg's Patreon page, link down below. All right, well, let's go out to the machine shop and get to it. Let's machine the rear bearing holder and complete our camshaft assembly. We've made the bearing holder for the front of the camshaft. Now it's time to make the rear bearing holder. Now it's right back here. We're going to start with this one and a half inch aluminum round. We're going to turn this diameter here and make the bearing pocket. Then we're going to cut this off, flip it around in the lathe, face the outside. We can use this template here to create the outside shape and then drill these two holes. Let's start by loading this up in the lathe. We're going to start as we always do and face the end and then turn down the spigot that fits into the back of the crankcase in the camshaft bore. I'm using a carbide cutter and I'm taking about 10 thousandths off on a pass. When my measurement says I'm getting close, I get the crankcase and test fit it onto the spigot. Then I rough out the bearing pocket with a half inch end mill. I'm using an end mill because I want the bottom of the pocket to be flat. Drilling wouldn't give me the shape of hole that I'm looking for here. I then use a boring bar to bring the ID out to 10 millimeters, which is the outside diameter of our bearing. I carefully approach the final diameter using the bearing itself as a test gauge. Here it looks like the bearing is such a good fit, I'm not going to be able to get it out right away. Then I turn down the outside diameter of the outer flange. I'm not going to bring this all the way down to dimension because I'm going to cut the outline out on the CNC and leaving a little bit of extra material is okay. Then I separate our workpiece from our stock and flip it around and put it in a collet. The spigot that fits into the collet is so short I put a piece of scrap aluminum round in the back of the collet to balance the collet nut clamping force. That allows me to tighten the collet down tight on our workpiece. Then I take several facing cuts to bring the thickness of the flange to the proper dimension. And this completes all of the machining work on the lathe. We have our bearing pocket. We have a clearance to free the inside race of the ball bearing. And the flange is at the proper thicknesses. Next we have to cut the outline of our flange and drill the two mounting holes. For machining this manually I would clamp it in the mill, touch off on the round flange, drill the holes first and then just use the one-to-one -one scale template to mark the outside and rough it out and finish with a file. And finally there's an oil hole that is drilled from the top and delivers oil to the center of the camshaft. Greg is going to cheat and machine the outline of the flange and drill the two holes on the CNC router. I clamped a piece of wood in the vise and then used a router bit to level the top, drilled a three-quarter inch hole to match the spigot and epoxied the workpiece down. I used Fusion 360 to create the tool paths for my CNC router. These files are available to my patrons and can be found on my Patreon page, link below. We have one more feature to complete before we're done. I mount the workpiece in the mill and use a protractor against one of the edges to ensure the part is properly aligned. I touch off on both sides of the spigot, centering my X mill axis and then touch the drill off on the inside of the flange, orienting my Y mill axis and then I spot drill and drill. And that completes our rear camshaft bearing holder. This was our last part we needed to fabricate to complete our camshaft assembly. We've only got one more major assembly left and that's the head assembly, which includes the cylinder head, the valves, valve seats, and the rockers. It's been fun. I'm Ellie. Thanks for visiting me in Greg's Machine Shop. Until next time, take care.